Hey everybody, Brittany Joyner here coming to you live from LAX. Yes, I am in the Delta Lounge and I just couldn't wait to record this video and tell you about my camper inventory board in Trello. Check it out. So I have had this problem where I have a camper and I can't remember what kind of things I keep in it versus what I keep it home and bring back and forth. And what this ended up resulting in was me buying a lot of paprika. Uh, you can see I talked about this in my newsletter a little bit last week and I just really looked in my cabinet one day and saw, hmm, I've got more paprika than I need here. How can I solve this with Trello? And here's how I did it. So I created this board. Each list is a different category of items that I keep in the camper. So I have my clothing, I have you know different spices, things in the pantry, cleaning supplies, stuff for our animals, things for grilling, etc. And each card is an item. So you know, pretty simple, right? And then I use custom fields to keep track of the quantity. And if you've never added custom fields before, all you need to do is go to this custom field section of your board and you can add a type. Again, you can say, you know, call it whatever you want add a type of a number. Um, you can also make it text, but I prefer using number for an automation reason, which I'll show you in a minute. You can determine if you want the field shown on the front of the card or not, and just hit create and boom, it's there. If you want any specific sort of styling to it, there's different power-ups that you can use, like amazing fields that will let you add various styling options. I don't really care about that all that much for this because I really just need to see the number and it's straightforward and yeah. So that's what I use for that. and. I have built automation that makes this board like really powerful because you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool, I guess. And it's great. So now that when I'm not at the camper, I can see oh, I've got dough weed. I don't need that. Or I'm doing okay on paprika. But let me show you my automations that make this actually very useful. So to go to automation, you're going to click the lightning bolt, go to rules. And I've already got these rules set up. So I'm going to walk you through what I have in there and then uh, show you how you would make them. So see, told y'all I'm, I'm at LAX right now. Um, okay. So here's what I've got on this board. First of all, when a card is added to the board, I want to sort the list by title ascending alphabetically and um, set the custom field quantity to one. So let me open up this camper inventory board so you can see the rules and see it side by side here. Um, basically what that means is whenever I add a card to this board, it's going to sort it automatically. So that's why if I'm trying to quickly find paprika, I know I just need to scroll down or if I'm trying to, you know, go to the top of the list when I'm looking for something, I can quickly find it. I don't have to sort through all of my cards to make it happen. So that's the first rule. And then I automatically set that quantity field to one because I'm going to assume if I'm adding it to the list, that means I have at least one. And then I can go in and edit that quantity field if I need to. But I also created a rule that when quantity field is set to a lower number than one, aka it's I'm out of something, add the red need to buy label to the card. And this helps me quickly flag and keep track of like, oh, this is out. So next time I'm shopping all of these things in red, I probably need to pick up some extras before I go back to the camper. And that is a super helpful rule. I've also kind of changed the quantity rules in different rules. So maybe in cleaning supplies, if I have one roll of paper towel, like I want to know if I have less than five rolls of paper towels. So I can change those with filters. And so you can see that basically what you what you do with that is when you make a trigger is you can say, you know, when a card and then click this filter button and you can say in a specific list. So when a card in cleaning supplies is added to a list or, you know, I think we were actually looking at fields. So when a uh, custom field quantity is set to a uh, number, sorry, it's this rule. <laughs> So we can see when a custom field quantity is set to a number lower than or equal to five, and I can say in a specific list or with a specific label or whatever I want to do with that, getting even more granular in those rules if I want to. So that's really helpful for flagging that. And then lastly, I have a card button that helps me keep track of this. So for instance, if I want to, you know, if I want to say that I've used something rather than having to go in and click on the field and think about, okay, six minus one is five, five, go click and then click that and type five. All I have to do is click this button called used one and it's going to automatically update this to zero. And notice it's now automatically added that need to buy label. So I'm just gonna actually fix that so I don't go out and buy myself chicken broth, but that's how that works. And to see how these rules are set up, you're gonna go to your rules and it's, you're going to want to figure out what those events are. And for me, it was when a card is added to the board. So that's your trigger. Or when you set the quantity field to a, when it becomes a number lower than whatever, um, that's when you want to be able to add that rule. So you go to create automation, 
Think about your trigger when it's added to the board. You can even say when it's added to a specific list. So maybe you add it to a specific list. That's when you would set a different quantity. Or you could just say when added to the board. And then you're going to go to this content, or sorry, this field section. And that's where you actually update the custom fields that you have for quantity to a specific value. Um, so that's a pretty important one. And then the other one for the card buttons, let me show you how this one works. So you create a card button. It's going to add this button on every card that when you click it, it performs the action. So we'll call this test. And then what you would just do here is you want the action under fields as well, where you decrease. You could also choose to increase. So like maybe if you regularly buy something in a pack of 12, you could add a button for increase by 12. So that way you don't have to go in and type 12. You just click that once. Um, but you could say increase or decrease in that number field by a certain amount add it in there, and boom, that's your button. So I hope this was super helpful. Even if you don't have a camper, a board like this could be really helpful if you keep track of any sort of inventory, whether it's even in your pantry at home, or maybe you have a small business and you're trying to keep track of like how much paper pens and office supplies you have at home. Uh, lots of different use cases for it. So I hope this is helpful for you and can't wait to see what you use it for. Thanks for watching.